because otherwise we'll be here waiting until end of days. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Still awake? Yeah, I've had the pleasure of having the last presentation of Joomla Days, but never had the pleasure of doing one of the first, so I would hope that you're still awake at this time and not running away. So thank you very much for your interest in joining me in the Joomla 4, the who, why, what, and how I called it when I thought of the talk. So we're going to try and enlighten you of what uh, the Joomla 4 working group and PLT have in mind. Uh, my name is uh, Marco, Marco Dings. I'm a member of the production leadership team, and I also manage the Joomla 4 working group uh, to get you the next best thing a CMS can have to offer. Now, to start off, I have to do this thing where I take a picture of all of you because if you have children, they have a hard time believing that people will come and listen to their father. <laughs> <laughs> so I do have to bring home some proof <laughs> that there's actually people in the room. <laughs> so taking care of that. I'll start off with a disclaimer. And first I claim the word disclaimer. A statement that is meant to prevent an incorrect understanding of something. And that is aimed at the word tentative. What I'm going to tell you, I have a bit of a trouble pointing it out. What I'm going to tell you about Joomla 4 is what we think it is now. Uh, and it's likely to change in the coming six months or nine months or whatever. And the nomen nomenclature will change, whatever. So please take that in mind and don't come back in six months, but you said that there was that full stop there and it's not there in Joomla 4, so, well, you didn't keep your promise. Sorry, anything I say in this presentation is tentative. Doesn't mean that it uh, reflects the opinion of the working group as it is now and it's the honest truth as to the current state. First, something on Joomla 3 because we're talking Joomla 4, but it doesn't mean that Joomla 3 is end of life. Uh, Joomla 3 will be supported minimally until 2018, possibly 2019, so there's plenty of time uh, to change, and Joomla 3 in itself is a great product. Uh, we've just announced uh, the Beta 1, uh, so you'll be uh, seeing a new major release uh, fairly soon. Then we have in stock for you Web Services 3.6, uh, run by Chris Davenport, who is in the room. Chris, wake up. <laughs> and then afterwards, there's 3.x, and it's labeled Backported Features of Joomla 4. Uh, and you'll see down the line that the stuff that we're trying to accomplish in Joomla 4 will try and stuff as much as possible uh, back into Joomla 3 to make the leap from Joomla 3 to Joomla 4 as manageable as possible. I think this is a familiar quote. If we're thinking about Joomla 4, one by Henry Ford, if I'd asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses, and then he invented a car. And I think that's a bit uh, what we're aiming at with Joomla 4. We're just not trying to improve a little bit on what we have in Joomla 3. We want to make a leap and put out something that people will remember and also draw people back to Joomla 4. Put out some buzzwords, power and simplicity. So we'll have to work on UX uh, because we have some pretty convoluted things that we have in uh, Joomla 3. Yeah, once you know them, it's easy, but new people, well, they kind of struggle with those. We want to be unique differentiate from WordPress, Drupal, Typo3, any other CMS, because we deserve our own place in the market. We want to improve on ease of use, and most of all, a better UX, a user experience. Uh, as I said, we've come to be used how to use Joomla, but that doesn't mean that it's the best way to do stuff at the moment. 
we want to solve problems with the stuff that we had, the features that we had. And that meaning just not adding features as, okay, you can select a color for a backend, but really make it different. And last but not least, uh, we also want to improve or at least contain our market share because you have to have a certain volume or participation in the market to yeah, be a valuable player and to uh, accommodate also corporate, uh, anything from corporate to your uh, casual uh, consumer user. So let's do it differently. Not to say that uh, what we did in the past was wrong, uh, but we have learned some lessons from the past. <clears throat> and we just don't want to be the ones that uh, incorporate the definition of insanity that's doing the same thing over and over again and expect different results. So how do we want to do that? This is my Joomla 4 constellation, like a star system. Should have started my timer, I guess. So Joomla 4, this green part, that represents the code. And from old, a, release was, uh, a new release was really focused around the code. Tech people just thought of something and, oh, that's a nice thing to add. And we'd add it and bolted it on. And once we're ready, we shoved it off. And then people got confused and waited for one, two, three releases to really adopt the new uh, version, major version. So you see, Joomla 4 is more than just about code. It's a combined effort. And I've chosen four stars or constellations. First is the architecture. You have to build something sound. You have to have, if you take the comparison of building a house, you have to have a large enough plot of land. You have to have strong foundations so that you can either add uh, to your structure or build higher. If you don't have that, then yeah, well, it's kind of useless. Next, the orange person. That's the user experience. A CMS is nothing if we don't have a good user experience. And I think that's one of the major steps we've taken so far is, and that's where we are in this timeline, is bringing the UX people and the architectural people together and say, okay, technically we want this. From a user experience, we want that. And we have to marry that, combine that. And that's what will make a great profit, uh, project. Uh, we had a code sprint several weeks ago in Athens with a number of UX people and uh, technical people. And I think, and wonderfully, we aligned on a lot of stuff that will bring you, bring us a great new Joomla. Then there's the red one with the bullhorn. That's marketing. If we don't start marketing what we have now, or what we intend, uh, once we know a bit more what we have, uh, then everybody will be surprised at the point in time that Joomla 4 comes out. And that's not what we want. We want, as soon as we have real solid stuff to share, we want to start sharing that and not share it only with, develop, uh, uh, with uh, the community or the, the end users, but also with developers in terms of what's going to change, what, what do you have to uh, prepare for. And then last but not least, my blue one, the education. Uh, it's our intent to start very early on in educating our developers, saying this is going to happen, you can do this now, in your code to do stuff uh, so that in the end your transition to Joomla 4 will be much easier and much smoother. You should prepare it. And there's a lot of things that you can do now and that will help make Joomla 4.0 a great release and not Joomla 4.1 or 2 or whatever when everybody hops back on board. So who's doing that? I'm standing here telling you, but I'm just mere the voice of a big group of people doing a lot of stuff. So it started out, uh, it really started out at the JMB on session. 
where a number of people got together from the community, raising ideas, things that we had to do, majorly initiated by Nicholas. Uh, it's a bit awkward pointing. Uh, that's the names for you. And then we got together in Odensee at the Red Bed offices uh, to discuss the first uh, architecture ideas. If you want to read up to, uh, to them, there's a rather technical discussion. It's up on the our summary. It's up on the volunteer portal. So, and that's where we keep all our stuff. Uh, Chris is here from that original group, and I'm here. Uh, so that was the team that started it off. Then uh, we got UX involved, user experience uh, of those Cliff is here. Uh, and we added some other people from the community uh, that didn't contribute that much until now, but are a great addition uh, to our core team and prove that we can extend beyond uh, the known uh, group of people that have been contributing. And I think that's a major step forward, and I think that we would want to elaborate on that uh, for the future. Now, uh, so these people were in Athens. Then we've still got uh, a number of people that weren't, in, weren't able to join us in Athens. Uh, we've got, uh, and we've got our marketing and our education for which, which we have not set up yet. But hey, we will and can use additional people. So if you feel up to it and say, OK, I want to contribute, please drop me a line on uh, Twitter. Contact me on Glip or through the volunteer portal. It's not necessarily that we can do a lot of stuff right at this moment because we're still working on some of the foundations. But yeah, we want to be ready to kick it off when uh, the foundation stands. And then there's a lot of work to do uh, for which we can use your help in all kinds of stuff. And certainly not all technical. So documentation, uh, education, marketing, lots of stuff that will be done. So if you have any interest, join me. Okay, so far for the surrounding stuff. So, what the bleep are we going to make? We're trying to make a minimal viable product because it's not only important what we're going to make, but we can make something very nice, but if it's ready in 2032 or something, eh, it's pointless. Uh, yeah. Just don't do it. Uh, we have to make that happen uh, within, within the next year and a half or something to get it to market to, uh, yeah, to make it count. 4.0 will have everything in it that breaks backward compatibility. Is that a term that's familiar to all of you? If not, please raise your hands. Or for that matter, if I'm speaking too fast, my English is too bad or you don't understand anything, please raise your hand. I'll be happy to stop and rephrase or have some of my English college, uh, colleagues uh, rephrase my sentences for me. So I'm guessing everybody knows what a backward compatibility uh, break is. So that's good. So we break stuff because we want to do new things that don't fit the old paradigm. Uh, extending on 4.0, on point X, we'll be adding, extending the features, adding nicer GUI stuff or whatever, uh, some things, but which will still contain uh, and uh, respect any interfaces and backward compatibility uh, for extension developers so that they don't get into a, a new round of recoding and doing stuff. Now, if you look at the problem, uh, the product itself, you can think about things like be compatible with anything. Have the latest and greatest as far as uh, software is concerned, software concepts, architecture, what have you not. And have it flexible because we want to do, yeah, we want to bend it in any way, shape, and form that we can think of. And yet we want it to be stable for corporations. We want to cater to consumers. But, and yeah, we also want to cater to the enterprise. Yeah, well, that's kind of a mission impossible. So it's not going to be 
the solution to any, uh, everything. Uh, it's going to be a compromise. It's not going to be fully consumer oriented or enterprise oriented. It's not going to be totally flexible or stable. Yeah, unfortunately, we will have to compromise in that. As we started out in Odensee, from the technical point of view, we said, okay, we uh, want to have uh, our users. Uh, that could be site builders, extension developers, backend users, site owners. So we built our vision on that. And then, luckily, UX team joined. And we did it the UX way. So they actually went out and did a lot of interviews with a lot of users of Joomla from all walks of life, be it consumer, be it enterprise, and they uh, created what's called personas, describing what they do, how they use Joomla. So that's an example of how we, more than just a technical geeky approach, said, okay, that's the kind of thing, and then uh, let's go with it. And we think that he does that. No, we actually did interviews, or I must say the UX team did interviews. So that should give us a better uh, foundation, marrying that information with the technical stuff, to get out a better Joomla. Our credo for Joomla 4 is designed for change. We want to be able to extend on what we have without breaking backward compatibility. Uh, I would assume that everybody in this room is kind of familiar with Joomla 3. If not, please raise your hands. There's not so many, but in Joomla 3, we are blessed with Bootstrap 2. And that was, I'm not judging the decision because in the time frame it seemed like a good one, and that's with all decisions, and history will judge me and us on what we decide here and think, okay, what stupid ideas did, did these guys have at that point in time? Uh, but we're trying to bring in some uh, fundamentals that will help us be able to accommodate change so that we don't run into the same trap of being stuck at Bootstrap 2, just to have an example. So first we raised the bar on some technical stuff. I listed it here, you're not, supposed, you're not necessarily required to remember this. So if you re understand what's there, embrace it, otherwise discard it. But we're raising the, raising the PHP version, doing some technical stuff on namespacing, introduce new architectural concepts like domain-driven uh, design, starting to lose, uh, use uh, smaller libraries. So that's like the technical uh, foundation. So how does this then work? How do the puzzle pieces start to fit? This is... I've got a few of these slides. These are actually slides from the architecture uh, presentation that I did in Germany and that uh, Chris, Chris will do this afternoon. So please, if you want to know, learn more about this stuff and have an interest, visit Chris's talk at 2.30 in, I've got room, it's somewhere down the slides. Um, but just for the sake of it, bear with me. So this is like the foundation for Joomla. And we have like pillars where we have the functionality like content, banners, uh, our users, and for example, web links. It's not meant to be complete, but I think you can envision that these map to the things that you see in the back end. And then the colored parts are the functions that we use like tags, tags, versioning, and workflow being content history and stuff. And you see that, like tags, is spread over all over the place. All over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, the green stuff is in web links, something, and then we have something in users. Uh, so it's scattered all over the place. That's how it is now. In our Joomla 4, and uh, we thought of a very fancy word for that, we've introduced the orthogonal component system. Okay, can I do a quiz on who knows what orthogonal is? No, no, that's octagonal. 
get some uh, native British speaker to help you. <laughs> uh, she always passes me on my English. No, orthogonal, anybody? Yes. Yes, so it's something that's, so if this is up, then it's something that's at a 90 degree angle. And you'll see in the short term what that's for. The orthogonal system will be our savior in this case. That will actually allow us design for change. It will make it easier for extension developers to make extensions uh, because with this system, they should, get, they should get tags, versioning, etc., for free. If you're an extension developer, you know that coding that stuff, versioning, uh, ACL, uh, ACL um, tags, it's quite a hassle if you want to introduce that in your component uh, at the moment. And any time that we think of something new, don't know what yet, then all extension developers have to add that piece of code again to their extension to make it work. And if you now look at the JAD, you'll see that lots of extensions have not adopted all of the new great things that we introduced into Joomla and that we could use, like tags or versioning or parts of it, because it's just a hassle. So this is what will happen to our columns. I'll replay it because I just love it. So everything versioning, everything workflow, anything tag, we'll just we'll pull together in something horizontal. And you see that's at the 90 degree angle of the verticals being users, components, web links, whatever. And everything's collected in there, or the majority of the part. Meaning that the yellow pillars, the yellow pillars, the web links, the, your own component, doesn't need to know that much about that. So that will help you tremendously, we think. Next, our input, our input channels. Uh, well, that's a fancy word. Uh, input channels, typically your browser that you use. That's what everybody knows. But today's world demands more. Um, for example, web services. Who hasn't heard about web services? Not a bad thing, if not the whole extent on it. So web services is a means of getting information from one website to the other uh, and being able to incorporate it. That's a fairly common trait. We will get that already in Joomla 3.6, courtesy of Chris Davenport. Sorry to wake you again. I'm teasing him. Um, uh, but we'll extend on that in Joomla 4. So this is an example of the things that we will backport so that uh, and, well, to say it a bit, so web services in 3.6 will be a bit of a clutch, may I say that, uh, Chris? And in Joomla 4, we'll make it more of like the real way we wanted to do that in an architectural good way. But still, it will be functionally the same, and you can migrate from 3 to 4 to have a good experience. But we have more input channels. So, for example, we intend to have a command line interface. So a command line is what you type on your prompt in your shell or command script. But this command line interface is intended uh, and designed in such a way that it can do anything that you can currently do in your backend. So be it installing stuff, setting preferences, uh, setting options, setting up categories, Anything that you can currently do from your back end, you could script. Write out a script for that and run it, and then that new website will be set up exactly in the way that you want it. And you can add stuff. So you can also dynamically add stuff. The big difference is that web services goes via the internet, so via your browser, and your command line that's run on your server, which is much more efficient for doing uh, those kinds of things. The technical image will be like this. So we'll got our browser, our web API, 
web services and our command line interface. And in the middle, we've see, we see again our pillars of components and our horizontals for uh, ACL, tags, whatever. We've got our input, now we want our output. And I've touched on it already. Uh, for example, we are, we're going to offer output into different formats, or I should say we offer the option of outputting into different formats. Uh, from core, so from Joomla itself, we'll have uh, a number of uh, supported output formats, uh, for example, uh, Bootstrap 3, uh, but anybody could add its own renderer to have support for ZERP Foundation or ZERP or whatever new framework pops up. Uh, uh, you can write your own renderer for that, and then that works with core. Of course, and unfortunately, you would still have to do all your alternate layouts and uh, adoption for the extensions that you use if you use an exotic something, but still, it's possible. And there are a lot of people out there that prefer this framework over that framework. But because of the horizontal uh, stuff and the, the, the way we render uh, things, uh, we're not breaking backward compatibility in adding that. So it could be HTML. XML, JSON, PDF, EPUB, if you can think of it, it can be supported. Again, if you're interested into the inner workings of this more, visit Chris's talk this afternoon. Now, I am going to delve a bit into what's more into uh, the realm of the extension developers, uh, topic HUD hotly deb uh, debated over uh, the last period is uh, which MVC, Moodle Model View Controller system we should use in Joomla and using this or how this is defined also pertains to the orthogonal component system, uh, how we can make uh, that happen. For Joomla uh, 4, we uh, restrict uh, the duties of the component. So a component is asked to only implement its own core functionality. Anything else uh, uh, is pulled out into the system. So the extension developer is relieved of any common task or as much common tasks as possible. That will mean that the code that they have to write will contain less lines, less possibilities for errors, and all of those uh, advantages. Internally, uh, we'll be using a concept called command bus, which allows, uh, oh, type is still in there, fixed that last night, allows us to extend the functionality and not the functionality. To oversimplify it, it will hold the middle ground between a single and a multi-task controller. So something that does uh, only one thing, or that can do multiple things, uh, which makes it more complex, uh, which we don't want. Visually, this is our traditional component with a big controller, a big view, and a big model. So the component, somebody making something, that's the yellowy stuff. And after we're done with Joomla 4, you see the yellow part has shrunk. So it's smaller, as is its controller, its view, and its model, the CVM. Don't worry about all the other bits. Uh, you can ask Chris about that later. Uh, that's the stuff that we do for them uh, in Joomla 4. Now as to some other advantages. Uh, let's first start on the database. Uh, I think most of us use MySQL as a database, because that's what uh, Joomla is really strong at. But if you also want to venture out into the corporate world or the enterprise world, you would want to use possibly different databases. And at this point in time, we struggle with that, to maintain that, because we've got our own libraries that do that uh, kind of thing. And uh, yeah, that's kind of different. So we are intending to using a library for that, People dedicate their lives to, like Doctrine, 
uh, and dedicate the lives to make that the best possible solution to access anything database. So we're going to use that. Why not? We try not to suffer from the not invented here syndrome, so let's use those database uh, things. Similar things goes for scaling. Typically now in Joomla you just say, okay, my local host is this, database name is that, and that's done. You've got a single database and, well, you have to optimize the hell out of it to make it scale really nicely. In Joomla 4 we intend to support uh, multiple databases, multiple read, multiple write databases. Because if you look at the highly performant system, then the majority of the actions required from the CMS is reading. Getting data out of the database. It's not the writing. That's done only occasionally when somebody edits an article. So you could really optimize for that and say, okay, I'll have 10 database servers that do all the read stuff for me and I have one for the write stuff. So you can really scale up your, uh, your application and make sure that it's easy uh, to be very performant. So that's a bit of fancy technical world that uh, CQRS, command query responsibility segregation. I do want you to leave here with some buzzwords that you can use at any conversation. And Okay, I know some technical stuff. And uh, last but not least, speed. Well, it's kind of inherent to uh, the scaling part and the abstraction part. If we are uh, not limited to like MySQL or Postgres, uh, you could also use like uh, no SQL databases, uh, which are better suited just for reading from them, which are inherently much faster. So this combination will cater uh, more to business and uh, enterprise kind of applications. I touched on the libraries, I touched on doctrine, and we actually had a very heated debate uh, on that in Athens, which way should we go? Uh, use a big framework like uh, Symphony and Laravel, which are really established uh, frameworks, uh, but unfortunately they do a zillion things and they're huge in terms of footprint uh, to your installation. So we did a SWOT, a strength, weaknesses and opportunities and threats analysis on all possible kind of uh, combinations. You will be re able to read up on that in the report that we're producing of the last sprint, if you're interested. Anyways, we decided not to use big frameworks like Symfony and Laravel. Instead of using, and instead we go with multiple dedicated libraries like the Titian Doctrine, um, uh, where people spend their lives uh, optimizing that for logging or for a command bus or for whatever uh, functionality. You can't compete with that. And they'll bring the latest and greatest uh, to that. Another aspect uh, that we intend to incorporate is. Uh, content staging It's part of the workflow. Now we have like a version history, but wouldn't it be, uh, and if you, if you now create a new article, we have an option in Joomla to say, okay, if somebody creates an article, I want to have another person first approve that article before it's published. Well, that's fine on the first run, but any other run, subsequent run, where something has changed, there's no way of approving that because as soon as you hit the save button, it's out there. So we intend to add something where we can have improvement of editing before publishing it, which will also cater greatly to uh, more corporate oriented uh, usage where people, separate people can then edit an article or edit content and the supervisor or somebody else can then check for grammar and uh, check for content and then have it published. Now this is a big one. Item ID. Can I, anybody explain to me what, an, what the item ID is or the problem with the item ID is? It's been buzzed in the community long enough. Yes.
Yes, correct. I think that sums it up correctly. I'll rephrase it because I've got the microphone and I'm a bit louder. So in our current setup, everything is linked to the item idea. So if we decide uh, what we show to the user is linked to the menu item and its menu item ID, it determines which modules are shown on that page, but it also adds uh, this ugly uh, uh, item ID uh, identifier to your URL, so it's been cursed by many, and it's been wanted to be gone by many. So we decided we'll drop it in Joomla 4. We will not use it anymore. And that opens a real world of possibilities. Because if you start to think about that, uh, having ditched the item ID, we do not require any central content, I call it. So typically, if you have a menu item now, it points to an article, and that's in the middle. It points to a form that's published in the middle. It points to whatever third-party extension, and that's published in the middle. Well, the middle could be anywhere depending on your template, but I think you get, get the drift. If we start reworking our system to not require that item ID anymore, we don't require the central content, and basically what we are getting is a separation of our content tree yeah, so how our content is organized, which is now kind of inherent uh, uh, coupled to the menu, but it's decoupled now from the menu. So we have two trees of organizing. You can have one organization of your content, which identifies your URLs and uh, uh, anything associated with it, and, then you uh, and the menu tree is different. So you can rework your menu tree, pointing to the content tree, and not uh, be bothered with the fact that your URLs change, that you'll have to do 301 redirects from one place to another. Uh, Ruth has a talk on that uh, tomorrow, I guess, uh, on redirects. Uh, so basically, the stuff she's part of the stuff she's telling on 3.x will be obsolete for 4.0, we hope. So that's really going to change the the gameplay. So it also means that we will get rid of this paradigm. I think we're all familiar with it. It's, it's in our blood. Well, let's create a category first. Then we create an article, put that in that category. And then we create a menu item to point to our article. And then we're done. That's simple. But if you try to explain that to somebody novice to the CMS, you think, that's bloody convoluted. That Why do it? It's much simpler in WordPress, so why should it do it this way? Now, we don't need that anymore. We can mimic the ease of use of WordPress. Or I should say we should be able to do that. We're still working on that. But we can, with doing this, we can, are starting to separate the content and the structure, and we can cater to two different uh, user types. On the one hand, it's the casual user, the blogger, uh, now typically accommodated by WordPress because he will have a very easy way of adding content, not having to worry about this very convoluted way of adding menu system categories, uh, blah, blah, blah. And on the other hand, we can cater to the corporate users because they can have a separation of content and structure and different people can work on different aspects uh, and uh, people working on the content can't mess up the menu structure anymore and the uh, associated URLs with content staging. So, yeah, that should make a lot of people very happy. All is components. That's another concept that's going to change, at least internally. Internally into Joomla, from a technical point of view, everything will be treated as a component. 
So if, and I'm using now these names which kind of relate to our old system. Uh, we are working on new names, better names to describe them, but I don't want to put anything out there to avoid confusion that we say, okay, no, it's gonna be this or that. So I stick to the confusing uh, old ones and we'll come out with better ones. But okay, back to that. Until everything's a component. So what we now know as a module, uh, you're supposed to then write a very simple component. Because of all the stuff that we've taken out, it will be much easier to create a full-blown component. So it's not gonna be that much more difficult to do that internally. In the back end, we still might have the concept of a module. So from that point of view, it wouldn't change. So there are modules. But the big thing is that a component can be rendered to any position. A few slides back, I referenced that uh, something's rendered in the center. And that's where it is now. But then you can say, okay, well, just publish it in the sidebar, this content. Or publish it in the footer, or whatever stuff you have. You don't, you're not forced on using the central position. That's a big improvement. And following that, it can all, a component, or module, or how you want to call it, can also be published to multiple positions at once. So the same content with a different view, whatever, or something, could be published in the sidebar and in the footer uh, at the same time. Uh, we will, and uh, you might wonder why would you want that? Well, think uh, uh, mobile devices, desktops. So for a mobile device, you might want to have it uh, in the footer for a big uh, screen, you might want to have the same content published in a sidebar. So we are going to have something like rule sets describing in some form of language uh, what applies to that module and how it is then displayed or not displayed. So that could be the size of the screen, uh, that could be the time of the year, uh, and that rule set is open so extension developers can add their own rules to it so that a module might listen to the shoe size of the developer or the face of the moon or I don't know, people will come up with fancy things to uh, add to that. But yeah, it will be very easy to publish stuff that is now very difficult because then you have, uh, in the system now, you have to publish the same module twice uh, make sure that stuff stays in sync. So I think that will be a major thing. To conclude, or start to conclude, I think this is the big question that's on everybody's mind, migration. At some point in time, we will have to move from 3.6 or 8 or 9 or whatever it is to 4. And that's going to be a pain because there will be change. And that's why we have semantic versioning. We say when we go through from version three to version four, we can break stuff, do stuff differently. But we are committed to making as simple as possible migration for extensions. And we intend to do that by educating, by making the interfaces uh, as simple as possible, by uh, starting to uh, do special developer days. So one of the things that are uh, planned or being planned is to have like a separate days be, uh, before Jay and Beyond in Barcelona next year, especially for developers looking at technical stuff. Uh, we want to involve marketing and putting out stuff, maybe doing like a challenge of the month, uh, like namespace your extension. That's something you can do in th uh, three point uh, X and that will make you ready for uh, um, for ditch uh, logging uh, for uh, some other stuff. Yeah, well, do stuff now and not later. So for the core stuff, we'll have uh, one-click migration. So anything core shouldn't require special attention. 
but yeah, unfortunately our extensions, uh, attention, unfortunately our extensions do require extra attention. <laughs> so, we minimize the required changes for Joomla 3 extensions, documentation, and uh, extension at JAP and Joomla days. So, reiterating some of the highlights, we'll have our horizontal components, the orthogonal ones, little. Web services, command line steering, um, no lock into renderers, no item ID required, anything's a component. We might have something called a page builder. I don't want to be extending too much on that, but that could pertain to the back end where you will have a significant different user experience in possibly dragging and dropping stuff around and putting it into module positions. Uh, you might get something out of me for a beer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bribable in that sense. And of course, migration. So that concludes my talk on Joomla 4. I hope it wasn't too technical. It's a bit, yeah, trying to strike the balance between developers who want to be informed and uh, our casual users or more casual users. As I said, a more in-depth talk uh, will be done by Chris Davenport this afternoon, digging more deep into the design patterns, etc. So if you're a bit technical, be sure to join that because you are going to learn a lot. I'm accepting questions and I see somebody raising his pen, so that should be a question. No? Anybody, any questions? Yes? So do you not see there any improvement in core ratio part of your component in Joomla? The, well, uh, the dropping of the menu item ID and the, uh, uh, the reordering and, uh, of the uh, splitting up of the content and uh, uh, the, the menu will already have a tremendous effect on how you structure your uh, SEO in terms of URLs. We have not addressed at this point any other improvements uh, in terms of uh, SEO because I think that's already, uh, at this point I think uh, there's a lot of third party stuff out there that can really handle that very well and we try to focus on the stuff that is really difficult to do from the outside because it would almost require hacking the system as such. So there will be improvements implicit by the fact that we drop the item ID, we'll have, uh, again, new routing, but that shouldn't concern you that much. But yeah, that will implicitly take care of a lot of uh, SEO stuff. Other questions? Yes? One second. One, do wait for the microphone. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Well, th this is the really appreciation of the community, the death of the mighty item IDs, and then <laughs> the every extension type joining together. So I just want to ask you, do we ever think about the building the front end editing for the Joomla? Because we are pointing uh, the pay builder, we more pointing back to the back end. So I was wondering if we ever get an idea to build the front-end editing for the Joomla in the well, future? Okay, we have front-end editing, but I touch on this page builder thing, and that could also have, have a significant impact on how we deal with front-end editing, but it's still in the conceptual phase because dropping an item ID is not as trivial as it might seem if you don't have central content. For example, if you have a blog with a certain layout type, how do you determine, and in, say you have two types of blogs, uh, and uh, one is maybe an archive blog, and one is an act, uh, a news blog, at the, uh, but the same article is in both blogs, and if you click on the article in one, it might be displayed in a different way than if you click on it in the other blog, but if you don't have an item ID, how do we ensure that the correct modules are displayed uh, around them or the correct page. So that's something that's heavily discussed internally and I've got like a 16 page document uh, 
uh, that we're drafting already internally to deal with all the exceptions and make sure that we don't mess up with that. But this being such a fundamental change, we're still keeping that under wraps until we ourselves are sure that uh, this can withstand uh, at least the initial criticism and then we'll sure to make it public and have anybody shoot at it because then any input is welcome. But yeah, it would require it to be a bit more mature uh, to be shared. But it will be shared. We start the fight. Sorry. One more question, and then anybody has to shoot me in the in the breaks. Uh, oh, they are finishing only now. <laughs> yeah, so I'm right on time, sir. Uh, see, that's being flexible. <laughs> yeah, fantastic changes you have proposed, and we should thank you for you guys. And my question is about uh, renderers. Um, you said we are not limited to using a particular renderer. Yes. But um, will it at least be you know, useful to have at least one single renderer for the back end? Because in the front end, we can use. Yes, that, that will be the default. There will be one chosen for the back end. Yeah. Uh, because that will ensure that you know, uh, in the back end, it will have a uniform layout and uniform. Oh, yeah, but it, it, it will be necessary because of the things that we. Uh, are thinking about like page builders uh, and stuff with all the JavaScript and styling and drag and drop and whatever something you just can't say, okay, we'll do that for bootstrap two, three, and zerp. No, thank you very much. We'll be very happy if we can do that for one uh, and make that happen. So, yes. That will be In the front end, we can have multiple renders. Yeah, you could have, you could choose, but yeah, you would have to stick to that. And if, if you, so we probably will be uh, supporting bootstrap two and three. Uh, for backward compatibility, so you would choose one, and then you're stuck with it. Um, so that's very nice for new sites, and then you can switch to a new one, but then it will require some rework on your part. Or you could write your own, and that will require more rework. Thank you. Okay, yeah, well, one more question here, and then we'll take it outside, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Yeah, hi. Uh, is Joomla planning to include any built-in component for uh, data analytics in uh, Internet of Things point of view? Uh, if not, then why not? Yeah, I think we're considering uh, adding uh, basic plugins for uh, Google Analytics uh, kind of stuff because that's a uh, much asked question. Uh, we're evaluating uh, the input from our marketing uh, people for that. But those would be probably things that will already be able to be pushed in the 3.x uh, series. Thank you. Hi. Yeah, well, really excited about the upcoming J4. It's really cool. And uh, so my question is, uh, are there many serious changes uh, in terms of uh, templating system? So would it be poor? easy to migrate uh, templates from the for J3 to... It, it's J3. absolutely our plan to make it as easy as possible, but if we are going to move the concept of a, uh, a central, uh, remove the concept of the central uh, component uh, thing, uh, if we are considering uh, page builder uh, items that might require some extra uh, stuff from the template to, for example, publish or make known to the back end uh, which wireframe to use, those kinds of things. So there will be changes, uh, but yeah, that's unfortunately, yeah, if, the one, if you want to extend, then something will break. Uh, I, I think we will have uh, the third-party extensions, and templates are third-party extensions, uh, will encounter some changes. So they will have to do something. We can't have the same uh, thing produce something significantly new. So there will be uh, changes, but it's our aim and goal to start communica communicating about that very early and uh, educate and make that transition as basic as possible. So I need to stop it here because I see John approaching and yeah. he's about... <laughs>